Hello and welcome back to Lambo Lectures. I am your host Jay Corby and today today we will be talking about Patrick Sertan, a corner out of Alabama. Okay, so as you as I just told you we'll be talking about Patrick Sertan and I'll be breaking down what his strengths and weaknesses are from what the game tape I have seen out of him and also if he would be suitable for the Packers. So just to start off this will be a little bit for the street since he is one of the top rated corners in this draft class. So this will require probably the Packers to trade up or some allegation that to come out against him to make him fall in the draft stock. But I just want to make this video because I feel like he would be a very good corner back that can work in the Packers system. So, So just so you know what type of tape I've been watching his highlights from this past season and overall game tape. And I just want to talk about a couple of good things that I've seen from how he's playing and just one or two minor things that could be worrying in the NFL. So first, the first good thing that I've seen in this, which got in my watching the game tape was him being able to sniff out the screens and he is overall pretty aware and it is able to figure out what play is going on so that he just has high game awareness. I think this is very good because as we've seen with our other corner this year, it's very good when you have a corner that knows what route is being run on you before the wide receiver even does it. With Jair Alexander, I feel like I'll be comparing him a lot to Jair Alexander in this video because I feel like they are two very similar type players. And yeah, so... In a couple of ways that I've seen that he might even be better, just in terms of stuff I've seen, is Jair Alexander has shown many times that he's able to sniff out these plays coming, like the screens and wide receiver screens, and even running the running back getting the ball dumped off to him. But he has shown that he does miss tackles pretty often. We have had games like the Rams game where he his only real target complete against him was a negative like five yard pass because he was able to go up there and make the tackle. There's also times where they do a negative pass and he misses the tackle in the backfield and the guy runs for five yards. So we do have to watch out for this, but that's not the same as, as our man Patrick Sertan. Sertain, I don't know how to pronounce his name, because in all the clips I've seen, he's able to get wrapped up and then he's able to drive the player to the ground. So I think that's very good. And this is also useful in the Packers scheme because from what I've seen, uh, Joe Barry, yeah, that's how, that's the guy that we hired, right? Yeah, Joe Barry does seem to play the same type of defense as Mike Payton where he plays off and expects the corners to crash down in any underneath routes. So if we have two guys that are able to crash down and get pretty good tackles, that'd be good because we've seen this year Kevin King just try to go out and get a hit stick, you know? and try to cause a fumble when that doesn't really work in the NFL. You need to more just make the tackle and take the loss of yards. So I think that is one positive. Yes. And uh, his second positive from what I've seen is that he is a very physical cornerback, which is good in this league. If you have a cornerback that can stop people from getting off the line and have him slow and slow them down, they'll just there's no way that can really be bad for you unless he's overly physical and just tears the wide receivers to the grounds and just constantly got closer to PI. But he hasn't shown that he does that. He's able to initiate contact at the line and then he's just able to be stick right onto the wide receiver. He's able to keep his hands on him when he's allowed. And once he gets out of that five yard range where they're allowed to keep his hands on him, he's also has the speed to keep up with them. So I think that's very good. Because if we have two lanky corners on both sides with Jair and now with Patrick Sertan that would be very good for our defense overall so that's what I think about that and then his third ability is he is like Jair Alexander where he's able to get up there in balls that probably should be out of the reach for the corner perfectly placed balls on the back shoulder he is able to find a way to get his hand in there and break out the pass which I feel like is very the same as Jair Alexander, where I feel like there's times where Jair is able to make diving swats in plays that he shouldn't be making. So if we can have two of these, like I'm saying, that'd be very good for our defense. So yeah, he's, like I was saying, he's able to 
what you call it, he's able to get up there and break out prices. There are some cons that I've seen is um Yeah, so he does have some cons, like saying he is comparable to Jay Alexander, but he does still have some refining he has to do. Uh, one spot is is also to do with his past deflections. I feel like Patrick Sutan is like Jay Alexander in the first couple years where Jay had him, where there is plays where it seems like he swats the ball away when he should have easy interceptions. Like in balls thrown over the middle where he's able to read it out. It looks like he should be able to just catch it and maybe get 5-10 yard interception and turn or even more. If he's able to break a couple tackles, he seems to just swat the ball down. So that is a negative because we've seen the negative impact that could have on a game in the latest game that we've played, the NFC Championship game, where Brady just threw a horrible ball. and It was on the third down right before half, and our safety sort of just watched it fall to the ground in front of him instead of trying to go for the pick. And then obviously on that fourth down, they convert the fourth down. And then last play of the half, we get burned over the top of Kevin King. So that is something that we will have to fix in his game is that we're going to have to make sure that he's able to, when he's possible, he has to hold on to the ball. We have many times this year with our secondary where they make great plays and they're not able to hold on to the ball. I don't know the statistic on this, but I feel like we're one of the highest teams in dropped interceptions because... I know, like, once or twice a game, at least, even some games even more, we drop interceptions. So, yeah. But I was saying this is comparable to Jair because really before, like, the, towards the end of this year, I feel like Jair Alexander, he always went up and he was able, he just deflected passes away or he had drop interceptions that obviously should have been caught, I feel like. If there's most other corners, they probably would have been interceptions. But... I feel like the Packers do have the ability to get this out of Sertan because we've seen in the, also that last game where Jay Alexander had two picks in crucial parts. Where sadly, the Packers weren't offense wasn't able to convert any, them into any points, but I'm good. Even the one is on the tip ball, so that was a hard play to make, I feel like, and he Jay was still able to make it. So if we can get them both to be able to get tip ball interceptions or even one-on-one -on -one interceptions where they sort of just moss them, moss the wide receiver, that would be awesome. But us, the other con that I have is in those 1v1 places where it does seem like instead of jumping up for the ball, he tries to just keep the wide receiver down and he tries to get his hands on him as the wide receiver is jumped up instead of trying to make the play on him. The one play that stuck out to me in particular was against LSU. It was a throw in the, it was like back corner of the end, end zone. And the wide receiver jumped up and, uh, what you call it, sort of, sort of just stayed on the ground and looked at him. As, as the receiver got his hands on him, he sort of just like pushed him. And the receiver had the ball for most of it and then sort of just dropped it at the end of the play right before it would have been caught as a touchdown. And I feel like that is just bad and we can't be having that happen in, in the NFL because those will be caught 99 out of 100 times. So if he, if that continues to happen in the NFL, that will be a downside. It's, when he does jump up for them, he can make plays on the ball, but he has shown that in a couple of plays in key positions in the game, like in the red zone, he sort of just watches it and hopes to just knock the guy out of being able to come down with the ball so I don't feel like that's great also in case scenarios with that if you have somebody like in the Super Bowl where the refs are just going willy-nilly if there are pass interferences that could also harm the Packers very much because if he keeps giving up pass interferences in the end and lets them have first downs on the one that's never going to work out for a team so yeah so now I'm going to go into my overall breakdown of him Overall, I feel like he would be an awesome player to mirror on the other side of the field from Jair. Because, I, as I was saying, Joe Barry seems like he plays the same sort of defense as Mike Pettin did. So if we... And our secondary was pretty much great. We had a couple of weaknesses, but they're all on the other side of Jair Alexander. So if we have two lockdown corners on both sides, that would be great for us. 
Um, but as I, as I said in the beginning of this, it does seem like he is a highly touted cornerback and he will go high up in the draft. So I feel like the way we would have to get him is if, if he drops down to a spot like 15 with the Patriots, I feel like the Patriots are a type of team that will move back in the draft. There's been many times where Bill Belichick just decides not to pick in the first round. So if we give them up, I feel like if we give them up the, our first rounder for their first rounder, maybe even a third or a fourth, we'll be able to get that pick away from the Patriots since they don't really like high draft picks because Bill Belichick likes to get more players than just one star player. So I feel like that's a way that we can go out and get our guy. And if we do, I feel like that would just be a win over on the draft because our sec if we have a secondary like this, I don't feel like we'll be able to get beat as much as we did in this NFC Championship game. And that's what we have to do. We have to improve on the places that we showed didn't work out with us in the playoffs. So, yeah. So that is all. If you have any comments or disagreements on what I said, leave them in the comment section below. Um, if you liked the video, hit the like button or subscribe to my channel and share if you think that any other people could benefit from it. So that is all from today. And as always, go Pack Go!